Lander. Uh, I haven't done this one, as you can clearly see, there's no stars on it. I have done the second one, I have yet to edit that one because it took me quite a while to do it. And yes, I forgot to mute my phone yet again. Uh, so, where are we? Right. No, I don't want the reaction control system. I want the electrical power system. Okay, let's get this started. So, what is it like where you are in the world? Today, I believe it is Spring Bank Holiday. So, I've just got in from work. I'm knackered. But you know what? I thought, get on here, get this video done. It's quite enjoyable. Just hoping to see, yeah, if I can get this done in one good swoop. Because the last video, it took me so long to do. I think I was approaching the hour plus mark. So, you can see the amount of editing and rendering I've got to do on it. Such a shame. Oh, well. Shit happens, eh? Right. Just got to wait for this. Sometimes it can take just a smidge bit of time. Just waiting, come on. <laughs> come on. Oh, we have movement at last. So those who know who play the game should I say they obviously are used to these uh, this lengthy loading time. And I, I cut it out in my videos because sometimes I can't think of bugger all to talk about. So sometimes it can be just a tad awkward, but uh, who gives a shit? It's a game I love playing. And I assume it's a game a fair few people like to watch as well, and play. Complicated as it is sometimes. I mean, on the last video, the Lunar Module Ingress, I was on over, so hopefully this one will go just a bit better. Sounds like we've got some stuff ready to go. All right. Welcome to the Electrical Power Subsystem Lesson of the Lunar Module Academy. Roger that. The EPS is the system responsible for powering everything in the Lunar Module. Power is supplied by five batteries in the descent stage and two in the ascent. So, two stage, two, God's sake, two descent stage batteries, number one and four, power the Lunar Module from T minus 30 minutes until transportation and docking, at which time the Lunar Module receives electrical power from the CSM. So after separation from the CSM during the powered descent phase of the mission, four descent stage batteries are paralleled with ascent stage batteries. Paralleling the batteries ensures minimum required voltage for all LM operations. So during lunar state, specific combinations of the five descent stage batteries can be paralleled to provide LM power. And before lift off from the lunar surface, ascent stage battery is powered is introduced. Descent power is terminated and descent feeder lines are dead faced and severed. Dead faced, I like that word. Ascent stage battery power is then used until after final docking and astronaut transfer to the CM. Primary AC power is provided by the two inverters which supply that and that. Synced coordination with the AC power LM subsystems. Electrical power is distributed to LM subsystems via the LM's pilot DC bus, the commander's DC bus, the AC bus is A and B. In addition to the batteries in the EPS system, the explosives devices system has two dedicated and isolated batteries solely for the use of the EDS. The control panel for the EPS can be found on panel 14 with switches and gauges to configure and monitor the various components. So panel 11 and panel 16 contains all the circuit breakers and allows you to connect each individual system available in the LM of the EPS. Well, while we're kind of waiting here... Let's... Uh, yeah, that bit will show you. Let's open. That's on zero. Alright, so let's get that open while we're going on here. Ooh. Ooh, don't let me go in there. Huh. Alrighty. 
like some of these strangers going on. Okay. So panel 11 and 16 contains all the circuit breakers and allows you to connect each individual system available in the lunar module to the EPS. There we go. Now that's a view. Look at that beauty. So the flight manual contains a lot of details on how the on how things are connected. In this lesson, we will focus on the operation of it. Excellent. So now it's like we get to a better height. So there we go. So first of all, in the descent stage, batteries number one and four has two modules being connected either by their low voltage taps or high voltage taps. And that's meant to say all, oh, isn't it? So during the initial stages of the lunar mission, only the low voltage power taps in these batteries are used to power the lunar module. And I've somehow managed to put this in here. There we are. There we are. So during launch, these low stage volt oh God's sake, these low voltage taps are automatically connected and will be powering the LM until you perform the subsystems activation checklist. So you can see if these batteries are online with their high voltage or low voltage taps based on the talkback indicator related to the battery. If it says low, low voltage taps are in use, and grey if voltage is online. Each battery can be connected or disconnected to the electrical systems using a switch. Setting it on connects it and off resets disconnects it. So a talkback indicator above each switch is usually grey when the battery line is on and bar barber pole when offline. So let's try to disconnect descent battery number one's high voltage taps on panel 14 which is over here. And the descent power section set the LMP bat one high voltage switch to off reset the talk back should indicate low there we go so bring the low voltage tap offline as well disconnecting the entire battery and set the LMP back one L over V switch to off as well there we are barber pole you can monitor the voltage of the battery and how much amps each is consuming used by using two gauges um, on the left of panel 14, which are right here. So we're using what, about 30 amps, I think. So the volts gauge should show 28, yeah. And yeah, so 28 volts, yeah, that healthy battery. The amps gauge should indicate zero when the battery is offline and the consumption and the consumption rate when online. So it's online clearly because it's what, touching 30, I reckon. So the power temp on Mon knob allows you to cycle through each battery, DC bus and AC bus, set this to number one. There we go. Amps have dropped to zero. So, battery one is now being monitored. The volt gauge should show 28 volts, amps should show zero. Yep. Let's set that tap online. And let's put that online. So the amps gauge should now indicate a reading above zero based on the electrical systems in use. Not really. LMP BAT2 or CDR BAT3 only have high voltage taps on and are set online with their switches as a set to on. Right, so the lunar BAT is usually offline during flight. It can be connected to the CDR DC bus and the LMP DC bus. The other batteries are connected to the LMP bus if they indicate LMP BAT1 and 2 and the CDR if they indicate a CDR BAT 3 or 4. The ascent stage batteries supply DC power to the LM pilots and commander's buzzers in essentially the same manner as the descent stage batteries. So the batteries are selected with the ascent power switches on panel 14. BAT 5 powered the LMP buzz and BAT 6 powers the CDR buzz. Each can be tied to power either buzz. Battery feeders are connected to the DC buzzers to do 100 ampere EPS bat feed tie circuit breakers, panels 11 and 16. Again, 11, I think. Yes, there's panel 11, 16, nice at the top. So try this now, still focusing on the LMP DC circuit as mentioned. There are two DC circuits, one for the LMP and one for the CDR. So set the power to. Oh, okay. LMP bus, okay. So the LMP powers the lunar module pilot side where, where panel 14 is. 
and the CDR powers at the other side, which are the this side. No, this is pilots. No. Ah, sorry, it's, it's one of them. Commander side, that's where this one is. And that is the pilot side, okay. So the LMP batteries are connected to the LMP DC bus by default. And the connection is controlled using the battery switches and the battery feed ties. So two bat feed ties exist per circuit. The bat feed tie A and bat feed tie B. Open bat feed tie B fuse, the right one in the UPS section here. There we are. And next open the bat feed tie fuse A as well. This will make the entire side go dark in the electrical system that connects the LMP BAT 1 and 2. So the DC bus is disconnected from the LMP DC bus. Indeed it is. Oh, I don't like it when it's dark. Apparently it's all little blue. Now use your flashlights. So the volts and amps gauge should show zero, which it will do now because there's bubble oil feed in it. As the LMP DC bus is completely off, the DC bus for comp light should be illuminated, indicating that the DC bus is offline. So on the right side of the back feed tie fuses, you can see two cross tie fuses. Cross tie fuses, yep. Yeah. Uh, these are used to connect the CDR battery electronics to the LMP DC bus. Close the cross tie bus fuses. To do this, you'll notice that the power is now back on, and the CDR electrical system will this. Hey, there we go. Isn't it pretty? All back online. Get rid of that now. So the volts and amps gauge should now indicate the, that the LMP DC bus is now back online again. Yes, we are back on. So when the cross tie fuses are open for both circuits, the CDR DC and the LMP DC bus are completely isolated from each other. Okay. Let's focus on the AC system. Two inverters exist where one can be used at the time. The inverter switch is used to connect either inverter one or inverter two to the electrical system, converting DC power to AC. So verify that the switch is set to inverter two, and this is in the normal position. Where the hell is it? Am I just being thick here or what? So it's inverter 2. Yeah, I'm too low here, aren't I? Where are I? I'm going. Let me get up again. Um, inverter 2. Yes, it's there. There we are. Yep, got it. Right. So the subsystem's activation checklist disconnects the INV1 from the circuit. Set the INV switch to INV1 and notice the inte integral lights go out, which we've just done. These lights require AC power, and it means that our AC power is out. The reason that this is in the INV1 fuse is open, so that the inverter is not getting the DC power from the CDR DC bus. Close the INV1 fuse panel. This should bring INV1 online. There we go. Alrighty. So you can use the power temp monitor knob to monitor the AC circuit as well. There we are. So, also using the monitor, the explosive devices system by setting the power temp. Where is it? There we are, ED off. When in ED off, they use the ED volt switch to monitor either the ED battery A or B. Set it to A and notice that the volts indicate 37. Are we sure about that? Yeah, quite high. Okay, they are used to trigger onboard explosives, that would be why it's so high. So the electrical system in the descent stage is connected to the ascent stage. A dead face mechanism allows you to disconnect the entire electrical system in the descent stage from the, from the ascent stage where I am now standing. So set the DES battery connection to switch to dead face. Notice that the talkbacks indicate BP and that the entire descent stage electrical system is depowered. 
This is used when staging into the ascent stage when taking off from the lunar surface. There we go. Okay, so if you take a look around the inside of the cockpit, you can notice that you still have power on the CDR side, the commander's side. The reason for that is the CSM is powering the CDR bus through the CSM umbilical cord. Oh, I do love the back of the this. Integral lights, they are very bright. But you can turn them all the way down. Just have a quick mess here. Um, yeah, love the integral lights on this. Beautiful. Mm. So, enter the command module and depower the power line going from the CSM to the LM by setting the LM power switch to off. Let's go to the CM. There we are. Back into the LM. Oh, Christ, it's pitch black. Okay, so back in the lunar module, notice that everything is dark, we don't have any power. Use a flashlight to connect the, uh, the ascent of that fire on the line. Ah, there we are. That. Then set the ascent back six online. The CDR LMP bus is once again being powered, but now from the ascent stage batteries instead. Ascent back six. <laughs> I don't need the backup feed on, do I? Right, there we are. We've got that back up and running. So please note that the EPS disc fuse on panel 16 needs to be closed for the vaults and amps to gauge on P14 to work. This concludes this EPS lesson. I know there was a lot, but now I recommend you go and check the electricity chapter of the Lunar Module Flight Manual. Right, good job. Have a good day. Well, guys, I'd just like to say thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure to do a successful live streaming of the Electrical Power Systems mission for the Lunar Lander module. So if you managed to watch all the way to the end, don't forget to show how much you enjoy the videos. Like, comment, help, subscribe, help this channel grow. We appreciate everything that uh, you guys do. The comments, the likes, the sharing, it's fantastic. So if you have this game as well, let me know what you think of it in the comments section below. We always reply back to you, and it's always a pleasure to watch other people doing And, of course, post your videos as well. It's interesting to see how other people find some of the more difficult challenges that are on this game. Um, I'm not going to be doing another video today because I'm on work tonight. I finished work not too long ago. I need to get some kip. So it's been a pleasure, guys. I shall catch you at another date. Hopefully, um, it should be... Before I close this video, I should post another video, not tomorrow, but possibly on Wednesday morning. I'm hoping to get Lesson 2 edited by then, but I thought, you know, because it's going to take me so long to do it, I'll do this one. So, thanks for watching, guys. Catch you next time.